Prop 13. Critics warned the two bills would make it easier for state and local politicians to raise your taxes. Carl DeMille, chairman of Reform California, well, his antenna is up on this. He joins us now to discuss it further. Good morning to you, friend. Good morning, Paul. Hey, all right, just give me a 15-second hitter on, explain Prop 13. This take. This goes back to when I graduated from high school. This is 78, right? Yeah, uh, back when we didn't have electricity. Uh, in <laughs> 1978, Californians were literally being crushed by higher taxes, particularly on their property tax assessments. People would see their property tax go up so that they couldn't afford their own home that they thought they owned. So Howard Jarvis, a, a really visionary guy, led a rebellion and Prop 13 was put on the ballot by citizens and passed by citizens, very little support from the establishment, including the Republican politicians. Uh, and it basically says, number one, that voters get a right to vote on taxes. Number two, that local taxes that are earmarked should be a two thirds vote. And then of course, that we should limit the rate of growth of property tax assessments to a sustainable regular rate and cap it. Um, this is a groundbreaking protection for okay. um, all residents. And what happened, Paul, is that we have seen this same concept uh, expanded. Prop 13 has been improved over the years by the voters in a series of initiatives to tighten the definition of fees, to make sure that uh, the legislature has to vote on taxes. But what we have seen is a, a gradual, and in, in the past couple of years, a, a rapid weakening of Prop 13 mm -hmm. And these latest two bills would kill Prop 13 um, in terms of its effectiveness. All right, I'm going to get there. But for for a California, now I've been in California for, I don't know, 26 years. It's the one element that makes the tax structure, and I don't want to, I hate to use the word, but w without Prop 13, this place is just impossible. It's, a, it's too expensive to live. It's, you know, if, if you were to remove it and put like, because I get it, property taxes here probably, when you compare it to the rest of the country, artificially low, maybe. But... No, you take, no, well, don't, but don't, like uh, from, I come from Wisconsin, where they're significantly higher. Long story short, if you take this away, pull this pillar out, you know, this Django block out, look out, Katie, bar the door. No, absolutely. And so over the past several years, like since 2020, Prop 13 has been eviscerated by California Democrats. And so we put together a coalition to undo the loopholes that they were able to extract in the past two, three years. Uh, and our bill got uh, 1.4 million signatures and now it's on the ballot. It would restore a two thirds vote on local taxes. It would mandate a statewide vote on things like the gas tax. It would tighten the definition of fees versus taxes. And then this is one I know you're gonna like, Paul, it requires honest ballot titles on oh. tax increases. So anything that has a tax increase inside the measure would have to have the words tax increase in the ballot title presented to voters. So this is a game changer. Democrats know that. So they are literally trying to kill Prop 13 through these two bills that they introduced literally uh, very recently in the past two weeks. Uh, and it will go to a vote today on the state Senate floor. Then it will go back to a vote if it passes in the state Senate uh, to the assembly. And if that happens, I really worry about how people are going to be able to afford. I mean, Absolutely. at that point, we have no protection whatsoever from these crazy left wing loons. But you who say run our state. you say if it passes in this bluest of blue states where no tax increase has ever looked frowned upon. Uh, isn't if really win it? It shouldn't win. Well, no, 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 no. The let me be clear. If? No, let me be clear. Voters do not want taxes. Even Democrat voters yes, don't well, want since taxes. Since does that matter? Uh, well, I know that's why those honest ballot titles are so important. Um, the, the 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 politicians in, in Sacramento and at City Hall know if they lie to voters that they can get what they want, and that's why making sure that Prop 13's uh, voting mechanism provides a honest vote and make sure that voters know that they're actually voting on tax increase is crucial to protecting Prop 13. So what the what the Democrats have done with ACA 1 is they are outright eliminating the two thirds vote requirement uh, down to just 55%. With ACA 13, they basically are blocking our ballot measure, the California Taxpayer Protection Initiative, which was supposed to save Prop 13 from all the things that they've done to destroy it. And so they are gutting Prop 13 with these two bills. The reason why we have a little bit of hope is 
the state senators and the state assembly members are starting to get weak need because as people are waking up and calling the state senators over the past 96 hours, really, in, the, in particular in the past 24 hours, the state senators are now starting to express reservations and they may not do it. They may not pass it out of the assembly in the state Senate. So we have a list of nine state senators and 15 state assembly members on our website, reformcalifornia.org. Click under the top story, California Democrats uh, move to gut Prop 13. In that story are the phone numbers for all of these elected officials that we are targeting. Call them and tell them vote no on ACA 1, vote no on ACA 13. The whole story is up there and it explains in detail what to say with their phone numbers. But I believe, Paul, if we sound the alarm, we can stop this. The, the liberal media in California is ignoring this because they want higher taxes. In fact, the, the politicians are dangling rescue packages for local TV stations and newspapers and all these outlets. Um, if they can get these tax increases uh, approved, they want to basically buy off the media, which is why you're not hearing a lot about this. But oh, we find Carl, this we can't to be, be bought. Come on. Threat. This is the biggest threat to Prop 13 since it was passed in 1978. Oh, all right. Let me be a devil's advocate for the people that say, yes. okay, listen, if we brought California property taxes up to what they should be, market value, we can lower taxes elsewhere. No, no, no. So, so first let me tell you that California, despite your experience in Wisconsin, you probably haven't been back recently. In California, we actually pay some of the highest property taxes in the country because even though our rate is capped and the increase is capped, we also have the highest property values. So what you're actually paying is higher than in other states. We also have the highest income tax, the highest sales tax, the highest car tax, the highest gas tax. We have the highest unemployment insurance taxes, workers' compensation rates, highest payroll taxes. These are, by every measure, our taxes are crushing working families in California. Anyone who thinks we need higher taxes needs their damn head examined. These politicians will never be satisfied. They want a mileage tax, they want an exit tax, they want a savings tax, they want even more car and gas taxes. They will never be satisfied. Every time you turn around, they're trying to get their hands in your pocket and they're doing it through ill-gotten means. They don't want to tell you the truth about what they're doing. That's why we need to protect taxpayers with a preservation of Prop 13. Go on that website, reformcalifornia.org, make your phone calls because it, literally the vote will happen this afternoon and this evening. Strong letter to follow. Carl DeMaio, get on the phone. I know you got work to get do. Get on the phone. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you for joining us.